In this video, we will see how you can use the new no code editor to capture your event hub data in Azure Data Lake storage and parquet format. You can think of event hub capture as a save button to persist all the data that is landing in your event hub. This persisted data could be used for a variety of downstream use cases such as batch or interactive analytics using Synapse Spark or SQL, for example. So here I have an event hub instance to which my real time data is flowing into. The first step that I need to take is select process data. And here I can see a bunch of pre-created templates, which helps me get started very easily. I see a template for capturing data in Parquet format and I select start. And the first step is to provide a name for my stream analytics job that is going to be doing this function for me. So let's call this contour. So capture and hit create. This is the no code editor, which we will use to develop the stream analytics job that will capture the event hub data in parquet format. The first step is to configure event hub by specifying the serialization type of your incoming data streams and specifying the authentication method, which your job will use to connect to your event hub. Once I hit connect, it will automatically start to fetch sample input from your event hub, which you will see within a few seconds. And once your data is loaded, sample data is loaded, you will then be able to review the schema, drop fields that you don't care about, rename fields if you want to, or also you can even change data types all within this UX directly. Once everything looks good, the next step is to configure the data lake output to which data will be persisted in parquet format. Here, I choose the subscription inside which my Azure Data Lake Gen2 account is located in. So I'm choosing, this is my storage account, and inside which I choose the container to which I want my data to be persisted, and I choose the authentication method that the job will use to connect to this output. And I can also specify a directory path pattern to which my data will be written to. And so let's keep it simple and say date and time. And I'm just going to leave these as default. And the serialization type is parquet by default here. And you can choose how often your stream analytics job produces output by configuring these two parameters. So once I hit connect, the connection is successfully established. And the next two steps is to save this job and then start it. To start your job, you need to provide the number of streaming units that this job should run with. A streaming unit is an abstraction for the amount of compute and memory that gets allocated to this job while it's running. It is recommended that you start with three SUs and you adjust as needed later on. So I'm now ready to start the job. And I hit select start. And here, it instantly takes me to the list of jobs that were created through this no code UX within my event hub instance. And within a minute or two, you should see this job go from created to starting and running state. And once the job is in running state, you know that the job is continuously reading data from this event hub instance and capturing data to your ADLS Gen2 account in Parquet format. You can see that this job is now in a running state along with the associated output watermark. And if you want to see metrics for how well this job is performing, you can use this link to find that out as well. Or if you want to stop this job or delete it, you can also do it from within this UX. So to double check whether this job is producing the right outputs as expected, let's navigate to my ADLS Gen2 account. And here I'm inside my Contoso Capture container and because I had given date time as the path pattern, you can see that it's getting generated and a bunch of Parquet files exist right now. Okay, so now that I have all these Parquet files, how do I make sense of it, right? So here, that's where Synapse SQL or Spark comes into the picture. I have my Synapse Analytics workspace, which uses the Azure Data Lake storage to which my job is writing these Parquet files to. I've created a notebook and in this notebook, 
the first step that I will do is just create a data frame that loads data to uh, from these party files into a data frame. And so let's try running it. And so now you can see that the command has been executed successfully and a data frame has been created, which is looking at my uh, container inside the storage account. And it's looking for all the parquet files that have been produced so far. And so if I want to quickly see the amount of rows that are there in this, I can quickly run a df.count. which will show the amount of rows that are there across all my parquet files right now. And I can also do things like print schema. You can see that these are all the fields that are being written to in my uh, parquet output. And I, if I also wanna look at um, the actual rows themselves, I can do a display of df dot limit of let's give it 10 and I run this right now. Yep. And here you can see the list of sample list of rows that are there in these parquet files. If I want to use SQL to analyze the same parquet files, I can do that using the built in serverless SQL pool and I can use the open row set command to look at my ADLS Gen2 account and inside the contest or capture container. And I'm looking at all the parquet files that have been produced. And I select run. And within a few seconds, we should be able to see the count of all the rows that are there across all these parquet files. And if I wanna see the top 100 rows, I can do that as well. And boom, you have that. To wrap up, we saw how you can use the no code editor to create a stream analytics job that reads data from your event hub and writes to an Azure Data Lake storage in Parquet format, which can then be analyzed downstream by Synapse Spark or Synapse SQL.